The second Christmas event is here, and with it comes with two new limited units. Let's take a look at the first one. Lunmilla Winter Owner, or X Lunmilla for short, looks a lot better gameplay-wise than her normal counterpart. I would have had some time earlier to test out how good she was, but I had to delay this video as the power of Alice has broken the game once again, and they had to push back the date of the solo raid this month. Hopefully when this video releases, I would have gotten some good footage with this unit in action. Anyways, my name is Psyche, and this is my guide and analysis on X Lunmilla. So when she was first announced, people looked at her kit with fairly favorable opinions. She is a minigun user, attacker class, as well as water code. This is the most important bit that I'll get to later. We're gonna review her kit, and as usual, I'll be using my criteria for leveling priorities as I have in my past guides. Skill 1. It's got two components. One affects the enemy, and the other for the caster. After landing 60 attacks, the target will get a damage taken debuff for 3 seconds, and Lumilla will also reload 20 rounds, assuming the skill is maxed out. The skill will begin with only refunding 11 shots whenever it triggers, and all levels you put into it will increase the refund by one shot. This skill gets a high priority. The reason is twofold. First, if you've seen the third volume of my detailed series of guides that I call Commander Bootcamp, I went over the damage formula in this game, and how the two most impactful buffs in general are attack ups and enemy damage taken debuffs. There's only a small amount of characters in the roster that provides this type of debuff, and if you look at Novel, well, she's perched all the way in triple S tier on Pridwin because of this. Now, X Lumilla's debuff amount is nowhere near Novel's, but since miniguns can fire shots like No Tomorrow, as long as you can stay on target, you can easily maintain this damage taken debuff continuously. In fact, if you play with 60 FPS, you can expect to trigger this at around every second. The second reason why this gets high priority is that the ammo refund can stack really well with max ammo overload lines and certain cubes. If you put enough investments into this kit, Lumilla can keep firing for an extremely long time. This skill is amazing to level all around. Skill 2. When you hit the core of an enemy 60 times, you will deal an instance of damage based on final attack, and also increasing crit rate. I'm gonna let your resources take a break, because this one gets low priority. It's mainly just passive damage that you can deal once in a while. And again, if you're familiar with how damage is calculated, the crit rate is really not gonna make too big of an impact. You won't be missing out much if you neglected the skill. Of course, it's also better than nothing, so you might as well aim for enemy cores whenever you can. The Burst. You'd be surprised how simple it is. Attack up and a reload speed up. That's it. But let's break it down. The attack up is quite massive, maxing out at just over 60%. Since Lumilla is a minigun user, this big of an attack up is pretty huge, as every bullet's damage will be amplified. The reload speed is also a good bonus. Though if you have max ammo overload lines, you'll barely have to reload often at all. Now you might be wondering, this is quite a simple burst skill. Is it really that good? Well, actually, yes. The burst gets a high priority. It's kind of like a case of Alice where the skill looks simple, but the implications of it gets deeper than you think. So let's talk about gearing next. If we were to briefly touch upon gameplay, I think it would be perfectly fine if I said X Lumilla has no gameplay at all. No, really. From her kit, we can see that she really doesn't need any support to work, but at the same time, we can also see that she's very selfish, and her kit does not influence any other allies. This can actually be a good thing. X Lumilla works straight out of the box without you needing having to have any special gearing requirements. However, the major aspect of this character that a lot of people were looking at is the fact that she's water code. To this day, we don't actually have a good meta water code DPS. The closest I would imagine will be Dorothy or Helm. They don't exactly serve their purpose as a sole attacker role. So while X Lumilla has a fairly basic kit, the fact that she occupies a niche that's still missing in the game is worthy to note on its own. Let's take a look at the Overload Lines tier list, as it's going to be relevant since she is a DPS. Again, I'm not going to put anything in the Get ASAP tier. X Lumilla really doesn't need any mandatory lines to work. Meanwhile, Attack and Max Ammo go on the Great tier. Minigun users really like attack ups, and max ammo lines allow you to fire for longer and keeping up that damage taken debuff. On the good tier, which I should really relabel as situational by this point, we have elemental damage. This is really going to depend on what you want out of your ex Lumilla. Because of her water code niche, she can be extremely good in raid content and other bosses that are weak to water, and I can even argue is a must have line if you are focusing on this aspect. However, if you don't care about raids, and just want your units to look good and do some decent damage, you can get away with not having elemental damage lines. 
In the better than nothing tier, we have crit, and honestly, some people might disagree with me on this, because if you're gonna be firing a lot of shots, then crit damage can add up over time. It's up to you if you want the absolute best for your Lumilla, but I think you can get away with not focusing on crit. And finally, by elimination, everything else is in the useless tier. Charge, speed, and damage aren't relevant for miniguns. Hit rate is not a concern because of the reverse recoil mechanic, where miniguns get more accurate the longer you fire it, and defense, to this day, is still defense. For cubes, pretty straightforward again. You can go with resilience in the early game, then bastion if you have overload gear unlocked. If you have max ammo lines, then the bastion combined with their skill 1 refunds you so much ammo, you barely have to reload. Now I'm gonna talk about a topic that has come up every now and then. How does X Lumilla compare it against Modernia? They're both minigun DPSs, similar playstyles, and do similar functions. Lumilla is more flexible than Modernia in terms of overload lines at the cost of AoE. On a pure DPS and flexibility basis, Modernia is still gonna win out here. She's got an AoE burst ability that's useful in both campaign and bosses that spawn enemies. And bosses that are just by itself. This kind of flexibility is really what makes a Modernia so good. The only weakness that she has is that you generally don't want to burst if there's just one target on the screen, as her damage gets distributed on the AoE circle, so if there's only one target for you to hit, then it's basically just gimping your damage. While X Lumela is realistically only good on single target bosses, her water element and self-sustaining kit makes her easier to use and less restrictive on overload lines. Assuming the scenario is just right, she can actually match Modernia's numbers. Being a limited unit as well, I'd say it's a pretty fair trade-off as opposed to being a pilgrim. We're gonna finish up with some good teams for X Lumilla. As her kit suggests, team configurations are also quite straightforward. One of her best teams is the good old Bunnies Plus Leader Core. More ammo and more damage taken debuffs? Sign me up! Just kidding, I can't sign up because Blanc is still the only Tetra unit that I'm missing. But overall, this team is extremely comfy and is still one of the most all-around solid support cores. If you got the Tiga comp, you can also try that, since X Lumilla does have a skill where you get benefits from hitting cores. However, just like in my Naga and Tia guide, this assumes the boss slash target you're facing has a core to begin with and is relatively easy to hit. But to be honest, I would stick with the bunnies if you have them, as other DPSs like Red Hood or Alice can do better jobs in terms of targeting cores. Another interesting choice for our team is with Summer Mary, if you were around earlier this year, who at the time was thought to be a future-proof support for Watercoat allies. As it turns out, she's becoming quite useful here, providing a strong element bonus as well as attack ups. You're still gonna want a CDR unit for the second slot, but as the game's roster expands, Summer Mary will become more useful over time. Another worthy sub-DPS ally for X Lumilla is Maxwell. While her charge speed buff doesn't affect anything, she still gives a hefty attack up upon full burst. So overall, Lumilla's got some options, and even gives a chance for a previously future-proof unit to shine, though Mary is limited as well. X Lumilla has a simpler kit than anyone would have imagined, but if you look past that, the role that she plays is actually quite important. She gets a solid 4 out of 5 rating from me. While her kit is rather basic, she works right out of the box and is currently the sole top tier water code DPS one year after Nikkei's launch. I have no doubt that she'll become quite good in the current solo raid whenever it comes out, and as a limited Christmas unit, as opposed to last year's at least, we're off to a great start. I'm also gonna aim for a copy of Mika, though if I'm gonna be honest, is not looking too good, but we'll wait and see. Let me know if you were able to snag a copy of Lex Lumilla. It's good to see the game still improving in its events over time. And as always, thank you for watching, and have fun out there.